everyone, Sus here. Thank you for being here today. I hope you're all doing great. In today's video, I want to do something a little bit different when it comes to uh, retro gaming or just uh, video games in general. It's a different perspective on collecting video games that was brought to my attention by one of my subscribers and a comment he did on my past video. So what I'm talking about is the different situations that our retro gaming friends go through in different parts of the world. Now, did you guys know that in some countries they ban video games or they have restrictions? So before we get started, if you can please uh, hit that like button and also hit that notification bell. That way you guys get notified whenever I make another video. And if you guys already have, I really appreciate that. In my last video, I tested two Nintendo 64s. I suggested to my viewers to purchase one of those ED64 or a uh, EverDrive 64. And uh, since since collecting all these games, especially the Nintendo 64 or you know all these retro games, it can get pretty pricey. But again, if you decide to collect all these games, be prepared that you know they're they're gonna be up there and they're gonna be pricey. It takes quite a bit of time collecting the original games. Again, as always, you know you can get lucky like I did here with this game, which I purchased for only uh, four dollars. And if you haven't watched that video, it was basically my last video. I'll put a link below. But that's when uh, at Matt Gamer zero eight four six he wrote a comment. So he said, if you don't have conditions to pay 700 plus bucks for one, uh, emulators are the only hope. So then I reply, true that, nothing wrong with that option, it's about enjoying the games. But it was what he answered back that really got me thinking. He said, at Zeus Retro, you probably live in the US, but just one N64 cartridge today in my country costs 200 plus the console that can go up to 500 plus so a lot of people prefer either emulators or buy the console and an ED64 so I reached out to a few of my gaming friends around the world on Instagram and asked their perspective on this issue and that's exactly what I wanted since it's important for me to get the real information from real people who are out there hunting and collecting so feel free to follow them I'll leave their links down below and that way you guys can support them that way all right so let's get started with our friend Trift and Flip from beautiful Ireland here's what he had to say about this issue here Trift and Flip is a really cool guy we actually had a really cool conversation about retro games hey Hi. Oh, what do you want, huh? What, what are you, you're messing up my video, that's what you're doing, huh? Okay then. He said, Ireland is only small. Take about three hours to get from east coast to west. So you can imagine not many places to buy retro games. Now guys, you know, here in the United States, we don't really think much about how fortunate we are when it comes to collecting video games because there's just so much abundance of, uh, of video games. We have many retro stores uh, just in my city alone. There's uh, so many retro games uh, stores just, uh, they're all over the place and they're very popular. You know, not to mention we also have events, we have thrift stores, we have flea markets, we got we have garage sales or yard sales. Oh, and about the yard sales, here's what Trip and Flip said. He said yard sales we don't have over here, so we don't even have that source for games. Now that was a really interesting perspective for me because you know Hey! So that was a little bit different for me. I mean, we are so used to yard sales here in the United States that we have them just about every weekend. Uh, no, they're just so extremely common here that uh, whether it's a small town or a big city, uh, you will find our yard sale just about every weekend for sure. So let us know down in the comments if uh, yard sales is something big in your country or if it's something that you know you would like to do. If you guys never experienced something like that and most of the time people are very good with the pricing. I mean you, you get really good deals and uh, you can even uh, find some really rare gems. So 
maybe it's something that you can start you know it might seem a little weird because it's not within your culture but maybe it's something that you can start doing other people can get involved they see you doing that you know you're selling your stuff and just create a culture just like what we have here in the in the united states all right so now we're gonna go down to beautiful south america in this case it's colombia and i'm gonna translate this i can assure you it's like 61 percent accurate Salon Triangle Square X Circle says So he says uh, well the prices are super high here and that's part because of the high inflation we have going on So then I reached out to a friend in Argentina Now this person wanted to be anonymous which I completely respect what they replied uh, actually brought up another issue It is very difficult to differentiate originals from uh, copies so then that brings me to the next subject which is pirated games and of course there's going to be a big demand for pirated games if uh, if they are restricted or banned or even in many cases extremely expensive and hard to find because either you know because either because of those situations or because of extreme tax so what is a gamer to do really i mean now I'm not suggesting to do anything illegal. I can see how difficult it can be for our fellow gamers to have access to video games. Another gamer friend from Argentina says, the originals was very expensive. They, they, are, they are a few and can be expensive. All right guys, now let's go to Mexico and see what our Mexican friends have to say about this issue. So I asked them what uh, what prices we're looking at over there in uh, in Mexico. Like in the United States, you got different states and there are different prices. So this is just to give you an idea. He says uh, it all depends on where you go. Uh, you're looking at anywhere from 150 to 1,000 pesos. Let's convert that, and I'll tell you in just a second what that. Is. So what that is in uh, in dollars. Is just a little bit of eight dollars for 150 Mexican pesos. But thousand pesos, you're looking at about uh, fifty-five dollars. As it also depends on the place and the title that you're looking for, and also the situation the video game's in. And then he mentioned some of the games that he's never seen in Mexico. In some cases, it is true that you know I have never seen video games such as Darkstalkers: Tower of Resurrection. Rue of Rose or Rumble Roses or Dead or Alive Extreme 2 and 3 in Mexico. He also says also Marvel vs. Capcom is very difficult to find. All right, now let's go over to our friends in Germany and see what they have to say. So Robin from Germany, he says, uh, if you visit some special conventions, it's not so difficult. But online on eBay, yeah. Okay, so now we go over to France and see what our friend Remy, he says it depends. We have stores such as GameStops in US, oh, like in the US, but I think prices are rising. We have a lot of retro gamers, stores have increased their prices. Right now, this is cheaper on internet, eBay, Vinted. You can find treasures on flea market at uh, two or three euros. All right, now let's go with another a friend from France and this is what he had to say he says oh you can easily find retro games but the prices have become prohibitive if you want to start a collection of retro games now you must have a good finances in most cities you will find a store that will sell retro but in Paris you have to place called uh, Boulevard Voltaire and there you have a few stores that are reference where you find everything you want but you have to put the price so I guess uh, video games in uh, France are pretty big and uh, it's a big culture over there our gaming friends from France uh, they have no problems finding awesome games out there all right guys so our next friend is Mika and Mika is actually from the United States on her uh, Instagram you can see a lot of cool pictures she posts and uh, you can see that she tries she does a lot of travels and this is what she had to say i've only really been to korea and japan and i'll say it's like anywhere else 
find a retro store that specializes in it. It's of course easier in Japan, but I think the best game collections I ever seen was in Europe, since they usually have games for all three regions. Europe, uh, is it, uh, I don't know what a NA is, but I know the other one is definitely Japan. Oh, North America, I'm sorry about that. Oh my gosh, that was dumb. <laughs> Yes, of course, uh, video games in Japan are, man, extremely popular, right? And I bet they have little or no restrictions on video games and uh, you can find just about any video game. So yeah, guys, I guess that, like in Japan and South Korea, video games are pretty big. So I'm pretty sure you can find some really awesome titles there, some really cool gems. Thank you for that reply and I'll leave her uh, link down on the bottom as well. Now let's go over with our friends in Brazil, locals for game. I asked them if the government banned uh, video games there and actually Brazil, I thought it was one of the countries where they uh, banned video games, but maybe that was, uh, you know, years back. If you're from Brazil and you're watching this video, let us know what, what the real deal is over there because um, online there's some articles that are old. We really don't know what the laws are currently right now, but you guys who know what's going on and live there, you guys can tell us down there in the comments. Now his reply to about the government banning video games, he says no. Uh, here uh, the culture of games is very big, it, it is very valued. So I just want to give a big shout out to our friends in Brazil and, uh, and thank you for that reply, uh, locals for games. And I'll leave his Instagram uh, link down on the bottom as well. All right, now let's go over to the UK where uh, May tells us, I don't really see many retro games available in stores and the ones that do have them are usually quite expensive. Thank you May for that comment and I will leave her link as well down in the uh, description. All right, so I did reach out to someone in Spain, but they haven't gotten back to me, so that's okay, no worries. And if anyone's watching from Spain, please let us know on the comment how difficult or hard, hard or any uh, any situations that you may encounter when it comes to uh, collecting uh, video games. Also, just to let you guys know, there are games that were banned in the UK, and uh, but a lot of those games were released later on. I found this website here from 2022 and it shows me some of the games that were banned. Sex Vixens from Space, Carmageddon, Under Ash, The Punisher which is one of my favorite games, Manhunt 2 which was very controversial. Omega Levering Z looks pretty, uh, pretty innocent to be honest with you but it says here, this game is likely to cause harm to potential viewer, children or young people. Without getting into many dark details, the game was refused because of its inappropriate attitudes towards characters who are implied to be minors. Oh wow. So I reached out to more people, but you know, just because of the, just for the sake of time and also because we're in different time zones, a lot of people didn't get to reply. In conclusion, you know, in my opinion, it's good to hear from other gamers from other countries about our favorite uh, hobby, uh, which is collecting uh, video games. I don't know what you guys like to collect, but I personally like collecting uh, PlayStation 2 games and uh, also Nintendo 64 games. Let us know what's your favorite to collect. And also, if you would like to comment and tell us where you're from and, uh, you know, just let us know stories or perhaps hassles or difficulties you go through in your country and things that you would like to see change, restrictions, maybe bans that you would like to see lifted or maybe perhaps high taxes. I think high taxes is probably one of the big things that uh, keep people from uh, purchasing, you know, video games uh, besides being very scarce. And also I really want to thank everybody I reached out to on Instagram and were able to answer these questions. And I truly appreciate your input, your information. It really gives us an idea of what you guys happening around the world, what, what you guys go through. There's some countries that I, I try to reach out, especially India, because I heard uh, many stories about India and I wanted to get someone's opinion from India.
If you guys are watching this and if you are from India, please let us know down in the comments. So in my personal opinion, I think that video games should not be banned. As an individual, as a person, as a parent, uh, you have complete control of you. I understand that the government is trying to protect children and this and that, but then again, the parent should have complete control of what the kids are playing. Personally, that's what I do with my kids. If a game is too violent or just too uh, vulgar or, you know, just too crazy for their age, I definitely don't let them play those games, you know, because in my opinion, it's, it's, it's just not okay for them to be playing those games. But I have complete control of that. Now, people who enjoy those type of games, now that's different because if you're an adult and you enjoy those games, then you have complete freedom to enjoy those games as well. So I don't think no one should be restricting your freedoms to, to enjoy certain games. So that's it for this video guys. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate you guys being here. Hit that notification bell. Leave a comment. Take care guys and I hope you guys find an awesome game. Go out there and uh, hustle. Get something unique, something different. Alright, so you guys take care now and I'll see you later.